going to take the role in coming to America too. Yeah. But you decided not to go that route. What was the reasoning behind it? I just didn't like the script. I love Eddie Murphy. I just was a little scarred with other things I've done and I wanted to uh, not play a bunch of people's sons. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. You know, and that's why I can't say uh, when Cat Williams talking about um, black content and how we need to get it uh, to, to come up. I mean, he had a whole run with Tubi. His The money he makes on one show could have funded a thousands of Tubi movies. Wow. I see Tubi movies making for $5,000, $10,000. Yeah, but how do you get the information to where you... Because he's a sharp dude, but how do you how do you make that brief? You got to listen. You got to listen. You know, good... You gotta, it's hard to get I, somebody to listen with money, man. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm just being that's real. Not, but that's not... That's, but that's, it's real. But that's personal choice. Yeah. Because yeah. if someone... If you if you on, a, if you on uh, the pulse of, of the culture, which he is... And you know, and that's why I got my new book called Producer State of Mind. Mm -hmm. Producer State of Mind. And Actor State of Mind is already out. And Producer State of Mind. I knew about it. You know what I'm saying? Does Tubi ever get to a point where it's competing with what Hollywood is, has established? What do you mean? It is Hollywood. I know it, but the I mean, same, it, but it's coming up a different way. Shout out it? to Adam Lewison who produced uh, Big Mama's House. Shout out to Adam Lewison who produced uh, two of my movies. Who's the executive over at Tubi? So he comes straight. It's the okay, same, same thing. I people. get it. That's hard. But I had a um, a producer came on here and he's shout actually, out to he did all his own my movie. Uh, Heather. Thank you so much for being my deal. Shout out to all my my <laughs> white friends. Love y'all so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. And he said he said that the so called bootleg movies, the worst looking movies, get more views than the who said that. Um, someone else who actually have a film on Tubi. Really, he's smart. Um, he said they get. Um, what's his name? He's from Arkansas, isn't it? Oh, yeah, but that's great for viewership. Yes. But the oh, C. James, yeah, C. James, oh, C. James, yeah, C. James. He said that um, the worst ones get way more views because mm -hmm. he had good quality and he was upset because he be, he did that whole movie is on his own independent. It, it looked great. Is that true? Is that But then there's branding. But then there's branding. Fox it had a, uh, Tubi had a Super Bowl commercial. They don't want to be branded as it the did. Ghetto Network. Mm. And no offense, I love those movies because I'm from Detroit. I understand it, but I'm like. It's just corporate advertising. Then there becomes financial instruments, which I can, I talk about in my book. Man, I got to They don't you. need, they just need enough. Yeah. Say it like that, because I don't want to talk too much. They just need enough. They just need enough for viewership, and then you can bring in financial instruments. Hold on, let me, I got to ask you, like, did you, um, what made you not, you was, you was going to take the role in coming to America too. Yeah. But you decided not to go that route. What was the reasoning behind it? I just didn't like the script. I love Eddie Murphy. I just was a little scarred with other things I've done and I wanted to uh, not play a bunch of people's sons. So, is that's this, it. Is it, it. Was it something to where you, okay, so you, you know, leaving that, you know how important it is when you go into a role how it affects you later on now that you've yes. been through the yes. stuff that you've been through. From lottery ticket, That's from right. Big Mamas, from Percy, all this I stuff. I got it. I see the spirituality attached to it. And I um, you know, I just look at it and go, okay, how does this how does this look? Okay, blah blah. blah. And then it, you know, you know, prayerfully you don't have to see my internet being like, yo, y'all, they just changed the script. Cause I know what it means. I know yeah, what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's only spirituality, um, only in that aspect you're talking about it affects you. It doesn't affect you as in getting future roles. It just affects you personally, like with the roles that you're picking while you're not picking certain roles. I mean, you you realize they reproduced what like Denzel will always be Denzel because he made a pathway for that. Right. Me, they will always look at me for the be the guy who's gonna do this thing because I made a pathway for that. I'm changing my pathway. Not saying it's gonna be perfect, but I'm changing my pathway, and that's where the, that's what I'm. That's why we're doing these interviews, right? And not many can do that because I know that I remember seeing an interview with um, that gentleman on um, Jamie Foxx show. Which um, one? The Square. I call him the Square. The light skin. What's his name again? Braxton. And he uh -huh. said that he went in. Yeah, he went in to an audition, mm -hmm. and his biggest pet peeve is when you go into an audition and the person sitting there interviewing you looking at you as Braxton he's calling you Braxton like hello that's not what I'm coming in here for yeah well he defined he defined that character and he's a really good actor I mean that's one of those things where you got it's hard to shake 
Mm -hmm. uh, back then, it wasn't um, things to shake it, but that's why I do these podcasts. Mm. You're like, oh, that's Brandon. Oh, okay. Because if I'm not going to make my, my name uh, in, in Hollywood, which I will, I will, the people will know who I am because right. I'm defining my story about what I say. Hopefully, it's, not, it's edited right. And then it's not a, a false headline, mm -hmm. which I, I trust the integrity of this this, this uh, boss talk, which that's why I came on here. Right. Well, I'm coming up there whenever you releasing these moves. Like when I went and did that for Jamal mm -hmm. Willard down there. I'm I'm coming to Detroit. I'm a, I, I want to you know help you know like like when movies are coming out. Yeah. I will, I be wanting to be in the midst of our people, man, to, because come rock with us. We yeah. over there. We got Dr. Two Studios. Yeah, South that's Dennis what Reed. I was gonna ask you. That. I want to know the build up. Dennis Reed. Well, you ain't getting out of the structure and the build up of Dr. Two. I want you to explain to me how you guys even developed it, how it came to be. Um, that's a that's a deeper conversation. I can't talk about it because really? we're, well, we're in the middle of of of, of uh, uh, lawyers right now in okay. a good way. In a good way. Okay. So we're in the middle of a deal, so I don't want to talk about what is coming because you don't want to project, but I'll tell you this, it's some big things coming. Okay. And shout out to all my white friends. Shout out to uh, Sam Horitz. Shout out to, uh, who else? Uh, Adam Lewison. Shout out to Heather, uh, who gave me my deal over there. Shout out to Netflix. Shout out to uh, Peacock. Shout out to everybody that's, that's, that's blessing us real quick just because... Um, um, I'm at a house, Negro, but I love you guys. <laughs> um, you guys are my friends. I gotta, so, I gotta ask you about the, uh, about just the stand up, like how therapeutic it, how, how much does it help you when you go on that stage to talk about the things that you know that you've been through? How, how, mu how much does that push the scale forward? For, well, it uh, gives Brandon. you a chance. Jonathan Majors can never say what really happened unless he goes on, on, uh, you know, ABC and they edit a certain way. You know, that scares me. So I always stay on stage. I, I got to ask you a question. Love so um, how big, okay, being an actor, being a stand-up comic, doing the things that you've been doing from a young age, how does mental health um, affect you? Being able to balance your regular life with your work life and actually, like, as you said, being a method actor, shaking all of that off. How does, do you have to see a therapist? Do you, No, I just that? pray. Pray fast. You know, Talk to God. God's my therapist. <laughs> In everything. In everything. I give all glory to the Most High. I don't care. Listen, y'all can say what y'all want to say. I'm not religious. I'm saying, I'm, but I give all glory to the Most High or the Creator or the universe, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Everybody got a different name for Allah, Yahuwah, Hashem, Jesus, whatever y'all want to call it. The universe, whatever. That's what I give glory to. But, you know, because everybody at one point, no matter even if you believe in God, you still have to deal with mental attacks. Yeah, the Almighty teaches us how to do that. So give me an example of something um, that came on you one day and you had to, because there's young kids, there are people who watch these shows and I like to help people through these cameras. How did you deal with, how did you overcome it? Give me that obstacle. I never had it. So I you mean, never had obstacles at no, all? No, no, I have a lot of obstacles because of my mental health. It, it was almost trying to just figure it out. It's like, you know, it, we don't deny mental health, but I'm saying it was almost just trying to, you're going through a journey. Mm -hmm. And every I can't say everyone came from the strong background I came from, so I can't really not be empathetic, but I would say turn to what's inside you Turn to that that voice that tells you, you know, the truth on what you should do that's better, that's in betterment for you. And for me, it comes from the Holy Scriptures. And um, if you don't have that, there's also a survival instinct that's hu that humans have. That you have to, you gotta, you gotta lean on survival. Lean on if you if you want to live if that's your choice you can't you can't control everything but what you can do you can control how you react to everything and that's what I, I I seem to understand so as much healthy if you want that change some people don't want the change mm -hmm. so you can't just be like oh um, I went through this thing and now I'm sad you know how do I feel okay now I want to hurt myself right who do I turn to okay you got 
drugs, alcohol, women, whatever. You said I got to look inside. It's the same thing. You know, these messages have been going on for so long with the, the Wizard of Oz. You know, Dorothy was already home. Mm -hmm. It means everything inside you, Christ, the kingdom is in you. You have to choose to bring that thing out inside of you to, to go to the next level. And that, that, that's a personal choice. And that's why you can't interfere. All you can do is, is inspire. You can't interfere. You can inspire mm -hmm. for them to go to that choice. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.